Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for being here today. It's obviously an exciting day for the club. It's nice warm, huh? <laughs> very warm day. Um, Mr. Chairman, would you like to, to start us off? Yes. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, well, it's been about 18 months since I sat here last um, introducing um, the manager at that point. Um, I've learned an awful amount. You know, it feels like I've been on a, an apprenticeship um, for the last 18 months. Um, I'm, I think I'm just about coming to the end of that apprenticeship. Um, learned an enor enormous amount. Some of it's been brilliant, some of it's been not so good. I've made so many mistakes, it's unreal. I think I can write a book on the mistakes I've made. Um, Twitter, Mr Curtis, maybe. <laughs> um, but um, I think we've made enormous strides within the football club itself. I'm absolutely delighted with the, the progress we've made. Just, just little things uh, in terms of structure and um, and process around the club, but almost also more tangible stuff like um, um, gate numbers coming, the number of, of, of spectators coming through the gates has been fantastic. It's the highest over a season since 1993, um, and we had two sell-out stadiums last last year of 17, 18,000. So we've made enormous strides, but obviously. It's been a very, very difficult week. It's probably the most, been my, the most difficult week that I've had um, in my 30 years of, of, of professional uh, business. Um, but after a, um, a, a very thorough process of, of interviewing uh, up and down the land, uh, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to welcome our new manager, Harry Kuehl, to my right. Um, I think he's going to bring such an excitement to this club that it hasn't seen for many years. I'm sure you've got plenty of questions, so I'll introduce Harry and then we can pick up a bit later. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for having me, Chairman. Uh, but I'd like to, to put out there and I'd, I'd like to thank Crawley, first and foremost, for giving me the opportunity in my, my managing career. And I wish wish them all the best for the, for the season. I wish all the fans and the players all the best as well. But I'm excited about this challenge. When the, the opportunity came up, when we sat down and we had a chat, you know, we have, we have a plan. And the ambitions that the chairman uh, was, was, was telling me and going through, I'm excited about because I, I know that this club deserves a lot better. I know this club needs to be up there and it's going to take time, it's going to take hard work. But that's why he, he's brought me in there to, to change it up and give a, a new kind of freedom to the players. And that's what I'm, uh, I'm here to do and uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Charlie, let's kick us off. Thank you very much. Uh, Harry, welcome. Good to meet you. Thank you. Uh, how does a, a young kid from Australia who's won a Champions League final and played in a couple of World Cups end up here at the world's oldest football club? By hard work. By hard work, simple as that. I, I love this game. Uh, I love playing it. Uh, I was always a thinker. Um, I didn't think uh, I would go into this as quick as I would have. But once my, my career finished, I, I started going into the coaching side of it and found that I enjoyed coaching more than actually playing. Enjoyed giving little tips here and there to the, the youngsters that I um, was teaching and then, and then had the opportunity at Watford to progress into my own team at uh, the under 23s. I loved it. I loved the, the challenges that it came with, um, but I felt I, I, I needed more. And then again, to get the opportunity last year was Crawley was excellent. And then now, like I said, I feel in myself for the hard work that I, I'd done at Crawley, I feel it, it kind of, it's paid off because people have seen what I'm, I'm capable of doing. I know I've got a long way to go and I'm learning every single day and I want to learn, but I I have to say I, I'm I'm proud of the actual that Notts County has seen the potential in me, and like I said, the ambitions that we have now really excites me, and I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, so, what was it about this football club that made you want to to leave Crawl? We'll just have a look around. <clears throat> I mean, it's a beautiful stadium. It holds twenty thousand people. Uh, the facilities here are excellent. The people here are fantastic. But again, it's the the oldest professional club in the world. I mean, that means something. And to be able, for me to be able to be part of that, I'm excited. And like I said, I, I'm here to work and I'm here to, to get the team back up to where it should be. 
and Mr Chairman, why was Harry the right man? We've got we've got a team which we've we've we, we inherited from last year and that we've added to over the summer. Um, what I was looking for primarily was um, a manager who is also an outstanding coach. And of all the managers that, that I have interviewed, um, Harry was head and shoulders above the others in terms of his coaching outlook and his philosophy around football. Um, a, a prime example at nine o'clock this morning. He was out on the out on the grass, marking out the cones. He was yarding out where he wanted the cones. He hasn't got a kit man doing. He hasn't got a number to do. He was out there because he wants to make sure that every training session is delivered exactly how he wants it delivered. He has a personal plan for every single player. He has a personal plan for every single position. When it comes to coaching, is a different level to anybody else that I interviewed. What target have you set him for this season, given that? It can I just stop you? Is anyone else hot, by the way? <laughs> it is roasting in here, and that's it's, it's just actually long? hitting me. No, I actually am really hot, and I'll start sweating, and then you'll think I'm nervous, and I'm not. I'm just putting it out there. It is really hot. The only unit that works is that one in the middle of the room. Has anyone got a, a, has anyone got a fan or a book or something? Just so I can pull it down, please. Sorry to stop you there, Chairman. That's, that's fine. But otherwise, you're going to think, well, what's wrong with me? <laughs> You want to try wearing a jacket? I know. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised. And please don't get all this on camera and laugh at it. Later. Please, come on. <laughs> that was a really good um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So no, what was what, what what is the target that you've you set your new manager for this season? Given that you're bottom of the league at the moment, albeit early days. We've played five games, you know, and and and, and we've we've still got we've still got 40 games to go. <laughs> Six games, we've got 40 games to go. We've got 120 points to play for. Um, okay, we only have one. The leaders are only just into double figures. You know, it's it's there's, there's a long, long way to go. Um, I'm I'm not at all concerned that we are bottom of the league. Um, it wouldn't matter if we were halfway and had four points. You know, it's a it's a win away. We are here on a journey. Um, um, what really impressed me um, within 20 minutes of of, of, of meeting Harry, um, my only question to him was. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What's your ambition? Um, what does not two years or four years or even five years look like? What does what what does seven years and ten years look like to you? And what Harry wants is a project. He wants to take a club on a journey, and he mentioned Bournemouth. You know, fantastic. I don't want a manager, and there was quite a few that I met which had some significantly and substantially more evidence, uh, evidence uh, experience than what, what Harry had. But they was looking for a job for two years, for three years, and then they would flick on somewhere else, then they would go somewhere else. Harry's after a project, he wants to set down roots, he wants to stay with the club, and he wants to build something which is going to be exciting, not just now, but in years to come. So Harry is the long-term solution for this football club. Absolutely, and it's um, depends if he had to call a room. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, it's a shame it's only a three-year contract, you know, because I'd like to have been more, but we were, we're restricted by what we what we, what we'd like to do. So if I could have given him a five-year contract, I'd give him a five-year contract. So we've got a plan, we've got a journey that we're going on, and this man's going to deliver it for us. Uh, Harry, then, what has the chairman set you as a goal for this season? Look. It's, uh, he's very ambitious. We want promotion. We know it's going to be a tough, but like I said, I looked at the squad when I uh, was talking to him and when I arrived. We've got some very talented players here. Uh, yes, their, their confidence are a little bit down at the moment, but even for what I've seen over the last two days in training, they're willing to learn. They're opening their minds up now. There's a lot more structure that's going into it. They're, they're very pleased with that. So again, I'm... I'm looking at it as a positive thing, and when 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 you look at it, I was devastated that I lost Enzio. I actually went in for for Kane Hemmings and lost out. I spoke to Nathan Thomas, which I was unlucky not to get. And again, if you were to offer me Christian Dennis at the start of year, I would have taken him straight straight away. So we're gonna. I only look at them four in your attacking in your attacking, and I think that's uh, an opportunity for me to be able to work. And then I've got the experience of John Stead up there. So for me, I'm excited about my attacking. And then when you look at the, the midfield as well, when you've got Vaughan in there, the experience that he brings. We've got some young players as well that are, are learning off Vaughan. But again, to be able to bring Rob Milson back to a club where he has performed at uh, the highest level, being uh, your number one player, but obviously didn't 
do so well in the last uh, the last calendar year in, in football. But like I said, I took him to Crawley and he was excellent. Um, so for me to be able to come back into all this uh, environment and to have these players, like I said, this is why I've come. You watched them on Saturday. What did you think? First half, I was disappointed. Uh, it felt that the ideas, there, there was nothing flowing. It felt like there was a bunch of individuals out there. There was no connection between the, the, the players. There was no leaders. There was no one talking. And it's funny enough, I, it didn't take me long. I was down there at half time barking instructions. And I, and I, and I gave them a, a quick rundown of what I would like to have happened. Uh, they came out second half, and I thought they did that for the first five, six minutes. And then obviously a, a, a reckless challenge changes the game. And then again, we have to adapt. And we went down again, but then again, I, I felt we were controlling the game. We were working it well. We got back into the game. And then again, just a, a silly silly goal to concede to make it 3-1. At full time, did you stand there and go, well, I've got a job on my hands here? 100%. Look, I, I knew I had a job on my hands before. And the one thing I did say to the, the chairman, I have been here before. You know, I had the... Last year, I was in the same position uh, with Crawley, haven't won, haven't won, and, and a lot of people were throwing questions at me, going, this is not going to work, this is, this is your ideas, doesn't work here, You're, this is League 2, don't forget, you know, this is, there's only a certain way to play football in League 2, well, I believe that's rubbish. I believe that the players that you have, they all want to learn, they all want to get to a higher level, and they all want to get better at their job, so why can't you do that? You know, I, I, I proved it at Crawley, and now I want to prove it here. You mentioned that you're excited about the options that you have going forward, but obviously conceding goals has been a real problem so far in the early days of this season. How do you aim to, to fix it at that end of the pitch? Again, you, you attack as a team, you defend as a team. Now again, you just can't... There's going to be times where you're going to be left one-on-one, -on -one, but again, this team has worked through the last two days of their positions in defensive roles. And like I said, I've had one or two players that know me from my previous club where if... They don't do it, they'll be out. And it's it's my way or the highway when it comes on to that way. You know, there's there's no excuses. You have to be in your position. If you're in your position, you'll be you'll be fine. We'll be we'll be defending as a compact team. You added Elliot Ward just this afternoon, are you expecting to add more in the coming days and weeks? Yeah, I'm I'm expecting to add one or two more. And again it's uh, it's important that you create competition, you know, because people don't want to walk into a club and feel that their position's just, you know, if I play good, I play good. If I play bad, I'm still going to play. And players don't like that. You know, top managers at the highest level always want two world-class players for each position because you know as soon as you mess up, whether it's in training or whether it's in a game, you've got someone breathing down your throat. And if you can have that, that means you're going to be playing at your best every year, every moment in football. Let's talk of a, a technical director coming in. How do you feel about working within that sort of structure? Look, like I said, this is a team team effort you know I, I I have a job what I do is I coach the first team out there on the park and then we have we have people with all other other certain roles there's no wrong or right answer you know you I do work out of an office here but I have a round table where people come in and they'll voice their opinion you know it has to be a team game it can't be just my way or the chairman's way we are a team and we work together and just finally for me for the time being how big of a moment is this for you in your been a fairly story career Huge. It's probably one of the biggest moments in my in my career because, like I said, it's it's something that I, I love. I love coaching, and to be able to be recognised, um, you know, through what I've done is, like I said, I, I I feel proud. I feel proud, and now I just want to go out there now and and prove again because again, there's going to be a lot of people out there with a lot of doubters and all that kind of stuff, and I love pressure. You know, I I, I thrive on pressure. I want it. And I want my players to have it because that means I'm going to be pushing them to another level. Thanks, Harry. All the best. Thank you. Hi, Harry. Congratulations. Uh, Michael from Sky Sports News. You mentioned you've got a lot of ability in the squad. Is it more that it's just a mentality that's failing at the moment and the squad are low on confidence, or do you think you can improve their ability as well? You talk about mentality, you talk about confidence. Um, do I believe in it? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a question for me out there. You know, because I think if, even if you're supposedly low on confidence and you don't want to try things, you know, on certain passes where you keep it very simple, pass it short, pass it simple, make sure you hit your target. But no one stops you from working hard. 
at the end of the day, no one's going to stop you from working hard. And if you stop working from hard, then that's that's another problem. That's not a, a confidence thing. That's not a mental thing. You know, because you don't need that to actually run. You know, so for me, I just think a lot of this team at the moment are probably pointing a lot of fingers at each other. You know, there's there's probably not someone to actually grab it by the, the scruff of the throat at the moment. They all want to do it, but they probably don't feel they, they can do it. So again, I will create that environment in training. And then again, we'll, we will start to see what we, we get with the players. You mentioned that you think you can play football the right way, an attractive way. Is that what the fans can expect? <laughs> again, I think people get lost when people say you want to play football the right way. <laughs> you play football to win. You know, we, we, we will have a structure, 100%. We'll have a structure and we'll go out there and we'll have a plan. But again, a plan can change within the first five minutes, ten minutes. You know, you could, you could train all week on a, beautiful, on a beautiful training ground, sun shining, no wind, no nothing. You come out there on a Saturday and it's raining and the wind's blowing an absolute gale. Are you really going to put the ball on the floor? It may be, you know, this day you have to go rugged and go long. So again, it's not about creating a style. It's probably more about creating thinking players. You know, to be able to let them have the tools to, to play a certain way, but to be able to have the tools as well to be able to adapt at any given moment. Grimsby tomorrow night. How excited are you to, to get straight into it and back in the dugout? Again, look, I was I wasn't far from the dugout on on the weekend, <laughs> um, and I saw the the fans that were just there. They they heard a. Uh, I, I wish I apologise for probably a few choice words. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, it's an important game uh, for us. We, we take every game serious and we, we want to win. And again, it's, it's great for my players because again, it, it gives them a kind of a, a free license now to, to impress a, a new manager. You know, everybody gets a clean slate. And again, I'm not looking for anything special. They know their instructions, they know what they need to do. And then when they have the ball, like I said, when they have the ball, they can be free. They can be free and play, but when they don't, I'll be looking at certain things from uh, my players to do. You mentioned that they know what they have to do. Do you feel you've had enough time to implement your ideas and thoughts and what you expect from them tomorrow night? Again, my, my, my ideas and thoughts are not rocket science. They're simple. And like I said, it comes down to the hard work and the attitude. And if you want to do it, and if you do it, it works. If you don't want to do it, I'll just get someone else to come in and do it for them. The Football League trophy as well, is it almost nice that it's not in the league and you're away from the pressure of the poor start that Notts County have had and you've almost got a freedom to go and play in the cup with no previous results to look at? I suppose people people can say it like that, but for us, it's a it's a football game. We want to win, and you know, you, you every every cup game, every game, every every friendly. Everyone goes, oh, it's a friendly. It's, there's no such games as a friendly game, or there's no such thing as pressure. You know, we, I mean, as in pressuring games, you want to go out there and play at your very best, and that's how we will approach this game tomorrow night. And just finally, if you had a message for the fans today, what would it be? Be ready because it's going to start rocking here. Anybody else before we go pitch side? We'll be doing one-on-ones later, but David, is it from you? No? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Welcome to the club, Harry. Thank you. Um, who were your influences coaching-wise when you, when you were playing? <coughs> that's, a, that's, that's a good question. Um, I had unbelievable coaches in my time and I had some pretty poor ones as well but again that's only my opinion um, but if, if if you really want to look at it I mean in the tactical side of football Benitez was probably one of the best um, I had I had hitting that was kind of free you know he kind of structured us in a way to defend but then let us go free in uh, our attacking phases of play I had Terry Venables which is excellent George Graham was my, my very first coach I mean when you saw George Graham walk down the, the hallway you'd you actually stand to attention, you know. So I had a good upbringing on coaches, and even, even like my youth coach, you know, my my coach Paul Hart, he was very big in my days of uh, working with me. But probably the best that I, I'd worked with was probably Frank Reichart when I had my time over in Turkey. Uh, I always thought I could see the ball, see the play in a a certain dimension in a certain way, whereas he would just probably take that little step back a bit further and really open my eyes. And he, he taught me a lot when I was over there about myself and about how I played. So he was probably one of the biggest influences and especially later on in my career as well.